Hi, everyone. Hi. Welcome home. Welcome to 601 on this Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. We are so glad to see you tonight. Welcome, welcome. So I'm James Brewer Calvert, pastor at First Christian Church of Decatur, and the other pastor is Anna Strickland. And uh, we are not wearing face masks, in case mm -hmm. you didn't notice. Uh, we are both sheltering in place in the same place. Mm -hmm. And it's been a joy. There are five adults in this household and we mostly get along. Yeah. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. We're glad to see you. Welcome to 601. Yeah. We're going to be uh, talking about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I'm excited. Now behind us are some candles reminding us that uh, the Holy Spirit uh, came upon the disciples as tongues of fire dancing on their heads. And we're hoping that these candles don't set us on fire in a bad way, or that they put us to sleep as in aromatherapy. So we'll try our best to stay awake. Glad to see you. Let so, us know that you're here. Comment yeah. and tell us, hey, so we can shout you out at the end. And any joys and concerns you want to share, please do. Remember that this is public and not private. So whatever you put out there is out there. Yeah. And also, um, so as we talk about the Holy Spirit, uh, we, we want to know what you think. We want to hear your thoughts, your insights, your experiences. Uh, what what does the Holy Spirit mean to you? One thing that Anna, you and I have been talking about is that there's so many different understandings yep. and meanings of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, starting with Scripture. The Scriptures have a wide range of ideas and insights and understandings of God's Spirit. And we're going to be going through some of those tonight. Mm -hmm. But first, you. We want to know what you think. So be sharing and, and texting and tweeting and uh, posting and uh, updating, uploading all of your <laughs> ideas about the Holy Spirit. And let's see if we can't start a movement. There we go. Okay, let's, let's take it away. Here we go. So I think a good place to start is in Genesis. Let's start at the very beginning. In the beginning was the Word. And in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the earth, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. In Hebrew, the wind is called the Ruach, the Ruach of God, the wind of God, the Spirit of God. Now, um, I told Anna earlier that I have a friend named Rojo, and, and I asked her what Rojo means, and she said it's in Swahili, it means spirit. And we got to talking because Rojo in Swahili is spirit, and Ruach in Hebrew is spirit, and in Arabic it's R-U-C-H, Ruch, which means that, that Swahili and Hebrew and Arabic all come from the same area of the world, and they all have spirit is a key part of their language and their faith understanding. The Spirit of God in Genesis has creative powers. It is a creative power gift of God. So um, take it away. What's next? So one thing about Genesis mm -hmm. and the Spirit of God, in my preaching and trauma class, we talked um, about this text and that sometimes in trauma, we feel like we're in the deep, this mm. unknown yes. that seems like it has yes. no end. Our feet can't touch the bottom. And that scripture that the Spirit of God swept over, that even in the chaos when we don't have a clear sense of time or foundation for ourselves, mm. that God's Spirit is there. That's nice. I like that. So now let's move into the Gospel of Luke and Acts, which were written by the same author. And in both of these, the Holy Spirit fills with power, mm -hmm. followers of Christ. And so people are able to, to testify, to forgive sins, to heal, to teach, to strive for justice, to preach, and to cast out demons. And that's for the whole people of God, mm -hmm. not just a few particular right. people, but for everyone. The Holy Spirit is for everyone. Nice, nice. So in the Gospel of John is a very different understanding of the Holy Spirit. Now in John, the Spirit is not introduced until chapter 14. 
when Jesus is talking with his disciples. And if you know your Bible, you know that John 14 through 17 is, is Jesus's prayer for the whole people of God, starting with his disciples. And it's a prayer leading into the Last Supper. So he introduces in chapter 14, the spirit of truth. What's fascinating about John's understanding of the spirit is that you get to know the qualities and the nature of the spirit based on its names. If you look in John, you'll find there are many names for the spirit. Here are a few. Paraclete, advocate, comforter, divine helper, and counselor. In, in John, the spirit is an intercessor, one who dwells within you, yet serves as an advocate for you. That is a powerful gift of God. So that's a very deep and, and beautiful gift, that the spirit is sent by God to dwell within you, to act on your behalf as an advocate. Now we can move into Paul's letters, which take up a big chunk of the New Testament. Oh and for Paul, yeah. the Holy Spirit claims us as children of God. Mm. And that means we are heirs with Christ of the cross and of glory. And even more than that, beyond claiming us with Christ, is this idea that the Spirit intercedes on our behalf. And we talked about this With last sighs week. too deep for words. Yes. yes. And yes. that has been something that has always stuck with me about mm -hmm. the Spirit. Mm -hmm. With sighs too deep for words. Sometimes we don't have the words. Mm. Now, now, the Holy Spirit has continued to be a topic of conversation and uh, disagreement and... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, controversy and all kinds of good things as people of faith have wrestled with who and what and how and where and why is the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ was founded by a number of really fine people including Barton Stone and Alexander Campbell and we are a part of the Stone Campbell movement. Now Barton Stone and Alexander Campbell differed greatly on their understanding of the Holy Spirit. For Barton Stone, he called the Spirit the energy of God. If you heard last week's sermon, the energia is the, the workings of God. Mm -hmm. How about that? So the energy of God. But for Barton Stone, the, the Holy Spirit was not a part of the Trinity. He was not a Trinitarian. He thought of the Holy Spirit as a part. Um, for Barton Stone, you received the gift of the Spirit after you came to believe, not before. So the Spirit was given to those who claim the faith of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Alexander Campbell, on the other hand, saw that the Holy Spirit spoke through the Scriptures, through the Word of God, to impact and empower the people of God through the Church. So that the Holy Spirit was, a, in effect, a stimulus. It was a stimulus. It stimulated the church and molded people into God's um, actors in the world. Alexander Campbell was more Trinitarian. He received the Holy Spirit as a part of God, um, as a part of the, the Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit working together. Now, that, that Those are some understandings of the Holy Spirit that have been given to us in mm -hmm. the Word and in our church founders. We want to know what you think. Mm -hmm. So Anna's going to check out the shout outs and see what you guys have to say. We'd like to hear. We want to know what you think. But one thing you said about Barton Stone yes, yes. leads me to another question. This idea of you have to believe before you receive the mm. Spirit. Because I know some people think that. There's also a thought of the Spirit is always with you. That's right. And so we want to know what you think about that, too. Right. All right, let's see. Hi, Julie. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Allison. Barbara and Quinn. Nita Carson and William. Hi, guys. Good all to right, see you. All right, tell us your thoughts on the all Spirit. All right, all right. 
I don't see any oh, comments come on, yet. Come but on, come on. We're still here waiting. Let okay. us know. So, so for my mother, uh, Buffy Calvert, um, she sees the the Holy Spirit as counterbalancing God's creative powers and God's strength by offering a more nurturing aspect of the power of God, um, a more maternal nurturing side of God's love. So you have uh, God, in, for my mother, it was God as father with the creative power, but the spirit as mother offering that nurturing side of the Trinitarian uh, mm. understanding. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Thank you. Ruth says the spirit is always there. Wow. Yes. 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 Okay. Maybe, and maybe, you know, yeah. you need more time to think about it. Because that's yeah. a, it's a deep Well, they've question, got four days. You know? Yeah. They only have four days. There's a test on Sunday. That's right. So Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. We're wearing red. Mm -hmm. We want you to wear red on Sunday, whether it's your pajamas or your Sunday finest. Or your red lipstick. Ooh, watch out. Watch out. <laughs> yes. And, and so wear red and the remembrance and celebration of the birth of the church mm -hmm. and the gift of the Holy Spirit to create the church. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. We're going to be preaching and st uh, studying Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple more on the Spirit. Yes, so let's talk please. about it. Barbara says, you do not have to be a believer for the Holy Spirit to be a part of your life. Ah. And Quinn says the Spirit as inspiration, imagination, ever present. I had a, uh, do we have time for this? We do. Yeah, we do. Oh, good. So I had a, a delightful conversation with one of our, our uh, participants in our congregation. And he, he was saying that for him, the fact that First Christian Church of Decatur emphasizes belonging more than believing opens the doors for uh, all kinds of understandings and appreciations of the spirit of God, but also, and makes him feel like he can be a part, mm -hmm. that our emphasis is not on the strict doctrinal teaching, you have to believe this, then the other, then the other, mm -hmm. in order to belong, but rather, we want to know what you think, and everyone can belong, because it's Christ's table. And all are welcome at the table. So you have your understanding of the Spirit, and I have mine. The mm -hmm. Gospel of John has an understanding of the Spirit. Paul had an understanding of the Spirit. The writers of Genesis had an understanding of the Spirit. My mother, your parents, everyone has yeah. different understandings. And we're all welcome to belong to God's holy church. I think there's something beautiful about the mystery too mm. that we all have our different ideas right. of the spirit yeah the, the mystery that we may not know until then and that's okay yeah. then we will see clearly but now it's a mist that's yeah. all right i'm comfortable in that how about you yeah i i am as well i think mystery leaves room for questioning and seeking, mm -hmm. constantly yearning. Imagination, yeah. yeah, dreaming, creating. That's beautiful. We've got some more thoughts here. Okay, let's see. William has one. The spirit for me is the gentle whisper, the calm, calm nice. wind that speaks to us. Nice. And Barbara said, the spirit led me to find a church when I was just a young person. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm that so glad. beautiful. I'm so glad. And we're the better for it. We're all the better for it. Mm. Well, listen, keep your thoughts and ideas flowing and growing. Um, let's continue to grow together. I'm excited. We're going to do some a um, uh, couple announcements. Outreach is meeting on Sunday at 12 noon. It's a, a fantastic body of Christ, people working and serving together. If that's something you'd like to do and participate, let us know, and we'll hook you up with the Zoom call. It's on Sunday at noon, right after church, which is at 1030. We're live streaming, and it's Pentecost Sunday, so let's be there in red. 
Let's do some uh, prayer joys and concerns. Well, I think um, we have many people on our prayer list to lift up. Again, I want to say everyone who's dealing with this virus, those who are essential workers and working to fight this virus, we pray for you and your families every day. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, do you have more? Well, the, the tragedy of 100,000 Americans passing away mm -hmm. from this this awful disease is mind-boggling and our hearts and thoughts are with you. We learned this week that one of our own church members, Ellen Young, a hundred years old, passed away from COVID-19 mm -hmm. and our, it breaks our hearts. So for the family and loved ones and friends of Ellen Young, we love you, we're lifting you up. And for all those who have suffered and are dealing with this awful disease, this pandemic that's affecting us all, our hearts and minds are with you. All right, let's pray. Wait, Wait. Tom, Tom thought today was Tuesday. Yes, Tom, we're all having trouble keeping up with our calendars. <laughs> yes, yes, I can, I can relate, I can relate, yeah, yeah. It was funny because on Monday was a holiday and we were like, well, the church is closed. Ha! The church is always closed. So that was very funny. Yeah. Well, listen, so we're going to unite our hearts and minds in prayer. And Anna has a prayer for all of us. All right. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, God, we open our hearts to you. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in all your mystery into our lives. Help us sit in that mystery. We don't have all the answers, or we don't always agree on our answers, yet we know that it has never been about answers. No, not answers, but the mystery and astounding power of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit that we are thirsty for. Holy Spirit, come. Come and push us to keep asking questions, to keep yearning, to keep wrestling with the faith we hold so dear. Gracious Spirit, come. Make our hearts restless for justice in the world. Holy Spirit, come. Be present with those who are lonely. Hold those who are hurting. And give the weary strength to move forward. Holy Spirit, come. Be with us who are always sure of your presence. Holy Spirit, come. Be with us who are unsure. Be with us who ask, where are you? Holy Spirit, come. Renew us. Reshape us. Heal us. Make us better. We are yours. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I needed to hear that. Well, friends and neighbors, we love you very much. May God's blessings and peace be with you now and forevermore. May the Spirit of God be with you and all of you. Yes. We love you. We love you. Mwah. See blessings. you Sunday. See you Sunday morning at 1030. Have a great week. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.